running down to the job. Get up! Decoy is down! Decoy destroyed! Decoy is down! Hey guys, welcome to my guide for the Heavy in Gears of War 4 Horde. The Heavy has some of the highest damage dealing potential in the game, as their expertise is with explosive and heavy weapons. In this video, we'll go over the weapons I recommend, when to play as a Heavy, card loadouts, and some do's and don'ts of the class. To start things off, the Heavy begins with a Retro Lancer, Boom Shot, and a Bull Talk as their starting weapons, which is a pretty solid startup to get going. However, whenever you get down the line, I would highly encourage getting at least a Drop Shot, Boom Shot, and Bull Talk setup, as that's one of the easiest ones you can go with, because all you really need to do is swap out your Retro Lancer, and then this build has its solid purposes. The Boom Shot is great for taking out clusters of weak enemies, like Trackers and Juvies. They'll all start balling up, especially if your Engineer builds a decoy. You can shoot right at the floor of them and get a lot of kills really quickly. Your bolt talk is great uh, in a few different situations. The number one being if you're going for a headshot challenge, then you can easily pick off things right alongside of your sniper. I mean, the bolt talk's an amazing little mini sniper of sorts. Uh, as well, if an enemy ends up getting a little bit too close for the comfort of your explosive weapons, you can take a step back and just shoot them with a bolt talk. It is a very powerful weapon, regardless of boost, just based off of the way the heavy's built. And then you have the Drop Shot, of which is the single most powerful weapon in the game. It kills everything and is a non-stop killing machine against everything on the planet. So you can use that against everything else. And this build tends to be my go-to. However, if you do find a Torque Bow, it really does do some good damage. It makes you a semi-sniper if you land headshots, and it is still a really solid ranged weapon for the heavy. They end up getting a lot of damage off, and it's a great little quick kill off of like Scion and your Swarm Drone Elites and stuff like that that you can pick off easily. The Torque Bow still finds a lot of damage. While you're not as good with your clustered kills, you make up for that by being a little bit of a hybrid sniper, and it still is a solid weapon pickup that you really won't sacrifice kills with. And, but regardless of what you pick for your secondary weapon, your main weapon is going to be that drop shot. This thing kills and devastates. You'll hear me continually say it is the strongest weapon in the game, to the point where a Hammer of Dawn, you know, the weapon in the story of Gears that killed billions of people and basically ended the world, is not as strong as the drop shot in Horde. That's how strong the drop shot is in Gears of War 4 Horde. Or at least it's harder to guarantee your damage with the Hammer of Dawn, so I mean like, I, I guess if we had the ability to aim a Hammer of Dawn, but that's for another video and another time. But anyway, another piece of advice I wanted to throw down is you can also use a lot of good heavy weapons. Uh, when I'm using heavy weapon damage the card, I notice that try shots and buzz kills tend to be the most effective ones overall. Salvos generally tend to be high regarded among the Horde community. They used to be a lot more powerful in the early days of Horde, to the point where every single person would pick them up, akin to what I recommend with drop shots. Um, but nowadays, I personally don't tend to grab them, as I can never quite get the accuracy I'm looking for. In downrange, I can't seem to hit anything to a great degree, and the Coalition did nerf the damage that these guys put out, so I find these to be a little bit more irrelevant than just having a straightforward, consistent shooting buzz kill or a try shot. As far as when to play a heavy, they tend to be the most duplicated class, as in where I was talking about in the soldier guide, the soldier ends up being the most subbed out class. It's because a lot of times people are substituting that soldier for a heavy. We a lot of times see that for a lot of guaranteed splash damage. It's generally encouraged to have a, at least one heavy at any level of play. However, I will say they tend to be a little bit less beneficial early on. If you're going to be playing on normal and casual when your damage cards aren't leveled and you don't necessarily have tankiness as a heavy, they can be a little bit more debatably switched with another soldier or another sniper. Uh, but for playing on hardcore and up, you're almost always going to want a heavy with you. Now on to card layouts, my preferred layout that I've found to be the best for me ends up being explosive launcher damage, 
Explosive Launcher Capacity, Mark Damage, Last Stand, and Thick Skin. This is similar in theme to the Soldier being tanky with Cover Boost and the Soldier Guide. I love being a tanky heavy. Being able to stare at a Sentinel without fearing their rockets, it allows me to have steadier shots with my drop shot. And overall, I mean, just being downed less is better. If you would have asked me a year or a year and a half ago, I would have probably said that going a glass cannon build for the heavy would be one of your best routes to take. However, it's not as relevant. You don't get that much more damage from any other cards in your build, uh, at least to the point where if you're constantly getting downed, your DPS is going to be significantly decreased uh, rather than just having some tankiness, being able to withstand some damage and putting out damage consistently. I will say though, another build that's really been grabbing me is the same build as mine, except instead of thick skin, you throw on Berserker. This was really introduced to me by uh, TG Exit's Voodoo, which if you guys are not following, you totally should on YouTube, go check him out. Um, but he's convinced me of the power of Berserker. Now that I have Berserker maxed out, I've seen some great use of it on Boss Rush. Insert the clip. Entry cost, okay, that works. Yeah, instead of sentry cost, I would definitely say going more of the turret cost would be a, a bit more helpful. Oh, okay, oh, okay. And opening my eyes to Berserker also really showed me some cool runs with heavy weapons. Generally, I tend not to be a fan of rolling heavy weapon damage because the damage from your drop shots really is all you need. However, I've been making a case for them lately. Running Berserker, heavy weapon damage, thick skin, last stand, and mark damage is a nice combo for being tanky, being able to tank a lot of damage, and then using that tankiness to put out more damage. Insert the clip! Alright, here we go. Here we go! Melt, melt, yes! Oh my goodness! Holy, holy, oh, he, he melted. That was me. I did. You, I, I got four thousand points out of that. Oh, oh, okay. I like this build. I like the setup. This is fun. If your heavy is level one and starting out and going to level 10, at level one, I encourage getting explosive launcher damage on first. Having that extra boost in damage is important on every single difficulty. Then from there, it is very unfortunate that the default heavy only comes with six boom shots and I believe it goes up to seven drop shots. So getting your heavy weapon capacity on is a fantastic second card at level three. Level five, getting marked damage. So you have extra damage on everything that gets marked and that extra boost um, in your damage spike is super relevant. And then after that, this is where the paths begin to diverge. Realistically, I think thick skin is an easy one to go with at level seven for that extra tankiness, as well as then it's easier to level up than last stand. So you can get a maxed out thick skin and have that on earlier, and that ends up being more relevant, especially at level seven, you're probably gonna be playing on hardcore and maybe some insane, um, of which being able to withstand a drop shots, explosive radius and some sentinels is a fantastic feature to have. However, if you do end up having the scrap to throw on last stand first, that is a little bit of a better option because of the extra diversity. You can withstand not only explosions, but bullets. Or if you really just don't want to go tanky and you want to have damage options, you do have things like Pistol Expert and Explosive Launcher Reload. I do find these cards to be decently useful in, say, like Jingle Juvies or Juvie Madness, like in a lot of your modes that have smaller enemies, you might find a little bit more purpose to them. I personally don't have as much encouragement towards them because they aren't as relevant and they don't help you stay alive as much, but that's me personally. I can also say there's a good argument to be made for turret builds if you communicate with your engineer. Given I haven't taken a lot of liking to turret capacity necessarily because I think in order to use it, if I understand this correctly from the experiments we've done, you have to buy the turret as a heavy, which is, is a huge power sink and I don't really encourage that. However, turret damage, if the engineer has turret discount on or just has build cost or what have you, turret damage is fantastic at shredding bosses and tank your enemies way into the late game. Especially if you give a heavy a level four turret with turret damage on, oh man, that is a fantastic amount of damage. And now for some do's and don'ts of the heavy. Don't screw up. First do, track your enemies. This is what we see in the highest level play and you can tell a team works together based off of the communication of seeing what enemies die where, mainly for the purpose of the heavy. Nearly every mode will give you a character holding a weapon that the heavy wants. Swarm drone elites will be carrying Boltok ammo. Scion drop shots will have, I mean drop shots, never would have guessed that one. 
Uh, if you're going to go heavy weapon damage, Scion, Sentinels, and Guardians are great for the try shots, salvos, and buzz kills that they carry. Grab a lot of weapons from the field and get them as much as you can. Communicate with your engineer then to store those on weapons lockers, especially grab a few of them in case things do go haywire, you end up dying, you don't end up being without a drop shot. Do number two, and this is a bit of a weird one, but practice your drop shots. And I really mean just start understanding how that drop shot works. I may make a video dedicated to this, but take a lot of time to understand how this gun shoots. Get comfortable landing direct hits on every single type of enemy. Many enemy types are really easy to land headshots with and get direct hits with, but then you've got enemies like Kestrels, Snatchers, Guardians, and Sentinels out there that can be a little bit tricky. This is where you're going to want to pay attention to that line the drop shot gives out, understand the way the enemy moves, and then just stay calm under fire. I see a lot of people that end up panic shooting the drop shot, and there are situations that definitely call for that, um, but a lot of times panicking whenever it's very unnecessary and you waste a lot of ammo. A heavy is the most dangerous when those drop shots are hitting directly. I am an unstoppable wrecking machine whenever I'm on fire and I'm going to be the guy that picks off sentinels because I can land a drop shot right on top of their head. Oh, yeah. Do number three, mark everything before you shoot. Now this is something I mentioned in the sniper guide and the sniper does have a lot better ability to help mark things out, hence why the sniper and heavy are such great buddy buddy combos. But you are the biggest benefactor to marking those enemies. Everyone on the team should be marking, and one of the reasons is so whenever you use your mark damage, you throw down extra damage on everything you hit. And whenever you throw down extra damage, your multi-kills get bigger, the bosses go down faster, friendships get stronger, and the world becomes a better place. So, mark your enemies. For the world's sake. And do number four, this is more of just a small gesture, but also just a really good sign of teamwork, and it helps out everybody overall. Remember your soldier. So, like, I always encourage picking up a drop shot and swapping out your Retro Lancer. If your soldier's running an assault rifle build, they could really use that Retro Lancer. Make sure to trade it out with their Nasher or something like that, and then use that Nasher to pick up a drop shot and just leave the Nasher somewhere. Sorry, Nasher. I mean, you could also swap that out to the Scout, but that's another discussion video for another time. And now on to the don'ts. Don't number one. Don't frontline. You can get tanky, but you're not that tanky with those last stand and thick skin cards. The cards are great for surviving damage thrown at you, but going as far in as a scout or a soldier with cover boost on doesn't bode well for you. Your weapons all have decent range while you're at it. Take some steps back for your safety because the team needs your damage. Having that extra risk just to get a few extra multi kills a lot of times ends up not being worth it. They're almost like a they're a midliner of sorts where you have your sniper and your engineer in the back line, your scout and soldier can play a little bit farther up and you are kind of the mid grade of sorts. Don't number two, and this may seem silly, but I see a lot of people doing it, is don't mistake what your Berserker card works with. It works with launchers and heavy weapons. Launchers referring to just your boom shot and your drop shot. Doesn't include torque bows, doesn't include other things, it is just those weapons. If I'm rolling Berserker, I don't want to touch my Boltok when I need to be dishing out damage. It just gets no bonus. Admittedly, there were times when I was experimenting with Berserker builds and I realized that I didn't read the descriptions. Just don't make my mistakes. This is kind of the don't be cherry, but I've gotten better at this. And don't number three, which is the biggest one that I see happening so often, more than anybody's proud to admit, is don't blow yourself up. Don't screw up. Start understanding good movement behaviors to get away from things like trackers and juvies whenever they get right up next to you. These, this is when you switch to your bull talk in these scenarios and get a close range kill, or you dive away, run a bit back, watch them get distracted, and then fire your boom shot or your drop shot. I see a lot of people blow themselves up more than I'd like to admit. Um, this is where thick skin is also a godsend. So if you want to be a little bit more daring, take a little bit higher risk. This is also where I love unloading on pouncers at point blank range because thick skin and last stand together. This is why it's my favorite build is because I will point blank them and it's entertaining and it's very fun. Um, but then I don't die. However, if you don't have thick skin on, watch your distance, watch your shots. I would say this is a don't be a cherry moment, but I've gotten pretty good about this one. If you met me whenever Gears 4 first came out, this was definitely me. But I've gotten better. 
just through hard work and practice. And I need kind of like a G.I. Joe theme to go over that. And that's about all I have for this one. The Heavy's a powerhouse of damage and hurt, and the drop shot is stronger than the nuke. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to comment or talk to me on any of the social medias. If you want to join in some Horde with me, I currently play on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday nights starting at about 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in my stream schedule. And until the next video, stay thirsty, my friends. And after 50 waves, they couldn't kill five cog. That's all it was. That's all it took. They just had to kill five of us. And they just couldn't do it. <laughs> GG's. GG's.